Hi there, today I'm going to be walking through how we can grade the values a person has for different demographic and firmographic fields in Marketo and yield a single output grade that you can use to power your marketing qualification mechanism. So this blog post accompanies the demographic and firmographic Marketo lead scoring model two section from the Marketo lead scoring blog post. So before diving into all the implementation steps that are listed in this blog post, we are first going to take a look at this section in the Marketo lead scoring blog post so that we can see what the output of the model looks like, what fields are used in the model and how these fields are used in scoring logic. So let's dive into the Marketo lead scoring blog post and go to the lead scoring model two section here. So the output of this grading model is a single field called quality score tier, which can have values from A to D. And it's the combination of the demographic score and the firmographic tier that give us the quality score tier. So for example, if someone has a demographic tier of two and a firmographic tier of three, then that will make sure that their quality score tier is C. And then the demographic score tier and the firmographic score tier values that you see here from one to four, they are calculated from the sum of all the demographic scores and the sum of all the firmographic scores divided by the maximum possible demographic and maximum possible firmographic score. Later on in this video, I'll show you exactly how we calculate the demographic and the firmographic score tiers but we'll put that on hold for the moment as I first go through the scoring fields that power these two fields. So we've got five fields that store the scores for the email address, the seniority, the title, the phone, and the LinkedIn profile that exist on a lead. And then similarly, for all the firmographic values for the company of that lead, We've got a score field for the website, the revenue, the Alexa ranking, the industry, and the country. So let's first take a look at the demo score control panel sheet here. So this sheet contains the logic that is used to determine the score that will be in each of these five fields based on what values are in the corresponding fields. So for example, if we see that any of these keywords are present in a person's job title, then they will get 15 points in the demo score title field. Or if any of these keywords are present, then they'll get 10 points in the demo score title field. Or if any of these are present, then it'll be minus 100 points in the demo score title field. And then similarly, similarly if someone has got a phone number populated, then they'll get 25 points in the demo score phone field, or else they'll get zero. If someone has a LinkedIn profile, they'll get 20 points in the demo score LinkedIn field, or else they'll get zero. A person will get plus 10 points in the demo score email field, so long as none of these free mail indicators are present in their email address. And then finally, if any of these keywords are present in the job title, then we'll assign plus 25 or plus 15 points to the demo score seniority field. And then what we do is we sum all these scores up and then we divide by the maximum possible demographic score, which in this case is 95. So if we sum up all these maximum values here, the 10, the 25, the 15, the 25 and the 20, that gives us 95. So whatever score a person has across these five fields, we divide it by 95 to get a decimal value ranging from zero to one. And then we compare this decimal value to these two thresholds, 0 0.3 and 0 0.6. So if this decimal value is greater than 0 0.6, then the demographic score tier will be tier one. If it's greater, th greater than or equal to 0 0.3 and less than 0 0.6, then it's tier two. If it's less than 0 0.3, it's tier three, and if it's equal to zero, and then it's tier four. And it's the very same setup in the Fermo score control panel sheet. So if we go to the next tab over, we can see that if any of these values are present in the website, 
they'll either get 20, 15, 10, or five points in the Fermo score website field, or looking at another example, if any of these industries are present in the industry field, they'll get 30 points, or they'll get 15 if this is present in the industry field. And then the same as before, we sum up the scores across all five of these fields, and then we divide by the maximum possible firmographic score. And in this case, that is equal to 100. So if we add all these maximum scores across these five fields together, we can see that the maximum value is 100. And then we compare this to the Fermo score low threshold and high threshold, which in this case are 0 0.3 and 0 0.7. And if the decimal value is greater than 0 0.7, it's tier one. If it's greater than or equal to three and less than 0 0.7, it's tier two. If it's less than 0 0.3, then it's tier three. And if it's equal to zero, then it's tier four. So this is how we calculate the demographic and firmographic score tiers. And then once we have those, that then enables us to calculate the output quality score tier based on these two values. So I've already hinted at all the fields that power our grading model. So I list them out explicitly here. So we've got the five demographic fields and the five firmographic fields. And you'll notice that some of them are powered by Clearbit. So this estimated annual revenue comes from Clearbit. This industry field comes from Clearbit, but, but in your case, it could also come from a form on your website or sales input. It's just for the models I've built, uh, I've often used Clearbit to power this field. And then the LinkedIn URL is also a Clearbit field and the same with the seniority field. And if you wanna see all the values that these fields can have, you can either go to Clearbit's website and look at all their attributes and the different sorts of values you can have for these attributes, or you can open up their attribute value sheet and you can go to something like industry attributes and you can see all the different values you can get for the industries from Clearbit. And once you see all of these, you can use these to help build your own scoring model. And once you know what fields you want in your scoring model, for both the demographic and firmographic, you're then ready to start testing your scoring model and fine tuning it. So the way we can fine tune our scoring model is by going to the quality scoring calculator sheet here. And then what we do is we will create a new sheet. And then let's just say in this case, it's July spend greater than or equal to zero dollars. We'll import all the leads we want to test and for each lead, we'll make sure we've got all the demographic and firmographic fields necessary for our scoring model. So we'll import them in this new tab. And then in the quality matrix visualization tab, we'll list the name of the tab that contains the people we want to score. And then in the quality score calculation sheet, all these formulas will automatically update to both pull in the information from this new tab and also generate all the output scores for this tab. So to show you guys that the sheet is dynamic, I'm going to clear out this field here. And then if we go back to quality score calculations, we can see that all these formulas give us NA. However, if we include the name of the sheet we want to score, which again is July spend greater than or equal to zero. This contains all the information we want. If we put this back in here, we'll see that all these formulas update to pull in all the field values for each person from this tab and all the scores for each field are then calculated automatically. And the great thing about this is we can also fine tune our model here. If we're not happy, if we're not happy with the email score for someone or the title score someone has been given, 
we can go into the demo score control panel and we can change it. So let's take a specific example here. So we see that product manager is in this person's job title. So we can see that their demo score title value here is 10 points, but let's make that if we want it to be 50. Let's change that to 50 here. And then we can see that automatically the score for the manager here has updated to 50. So this is how we can iterate and fine tune our scoring model. We can edit the scores in the demo and Fermo score control panels, and then see the output updated automatically in this sheet. And we can keep going back and forth between updating these two control panel sheets and looking at the output in this sheet until we are happy with each of the scores assigned here and each of the scores assigned here. And we can do the same thing for the thresholds as well. So if we update any of these thresholds, then, then the demographic score tier and the firmographic score tiers in this sheet will be updated automatically too. So not only can we change these scores and see the output change automatically, we can also change these tiers and then we'll see the demographic and firmographic score tiers and therefore the person's quality score tier change automatically as well. So we can do all this fine tuning in the sheet. And once we are happy with our outputs in both this sheet and this sheet, we are now ready to implement this scoring logic within Marketo. And this is where we will now dive back in to the Marketo demo and Fermo grading blog post. Okay, so let's dive into Marketo. So we can see that the master campaign, which triggers the scoring workflow to run is triggered by four main things. The campaign being requested, which is useful for backdating. So if we have a bunch of historical leads that we want to score with this mechanism, we can use the campaign as requested trigger to do that. When a person is enriched by Clearbit, indicated by the clear bit ready field changing, the person is created or any of the fields from our scoring model. If any of these change, then we want to trigger this scoring workflow. And down the bottom here, we can include any filters that we want. So we could only let people go through, we could only let people go through this scoring workflow if they've been enriched by clear bit. So that's why we have this filter here. And we could also have a filter to say, let's not send any free mails um, through this scoring campaign. So we could say email address does not contain at gmail.com because it's unlikely that Clearbit will have a lot of information on these people. So it might not be worth scoring them. So you can put whatever filters you want down here. And it's worth noting that if you need people to be enriched by Clearbit, then you might need the person is created trigger here because you want them to be enriched by clear, but before you enrich them. So therefore you can remove the person is created trigger and then just rely on the clear bit ready trigger. So these are all the triggers for our workflow. And then once we're in the flow, we first call the demographic executable campaign. And this demographic executable campaign is responsible for calling each of the five executable campaigns, which calculate the score for each of these fields. And then similarly, the firmographic executable campaign calls each of these five executable campaigns to calculate the score for these fields. And the scores we'll be calculating for these 10 fields comes from the demographic and firmographic score control panel, which, you, which we have fine tuned by testing before implementation in Marketo. And then the last campaign here, the quality matrix campaign, and you'll notice that it's a request campaign here, and I'll explain the reason for that later on. But this campaign is responsible for summing all the demographic and firmographic scores together 
getting the demographic and firmographic score tiers, and then calculating the quality scale, then calculating the quality score tier, which is the final output from our model. One important thing to note here is that since we want people to be able to enter this scoring campaign multiple times, so we'll score them when they're first created, but then when some of their field values change, we will need to rescore them. So in this case, we need to ensure that in the master campaign here, we set this schedule to allow the person through the flow every time. And we need to do this for every single one of the executable campaigns and this request campaign down the bottom. We need to set the schedule for each of these campaigns to let the person through the flow every time. Okay, so let's take a look at the demographic executable here. It's very simple. There's no conditions in the smart list. We just execute it. And then we execute each of these five demographic scoring campaigns in succession. And then for the firmographic, it's the exact same setup, nothing in the smart list. And then we just execute all the five demographic scoring campaigns in succession. And let's see what some of these campaigns look like. So when we request the revenue campaign, again, nothing special. And then this change data value step here to update the revenue, the firm will score revenue value. This is based on the logic in the Fermo score control panel sheet here. So we can see that if the revenue is any of these values, it should be 15. If it's any of these values, it should be 10. And that's exactly what our smart campaign is doing here. So if any of these values, so if the company estimated annual revenue is any of these values, it's going to be 15. If it's any of these other values, it's going to be 10 or else the Fermo score revenue is going to be equal to zero. So we can use simple is or contains or starts with matching here, but we can also do more advanced matching if we need complex. We can also do more advanced matching if we need complex matching logic using smart lists. So for example, if we take a look at the seniority flow here, we can see that if someone is a member of this smart list, it's 25 points. If they're a member of this smart list, it's 15, this smart list, it's 10 or else it's zero. And we define the smart list down the bottom. So let's take a look at one of them. So if someone is in the seniority top smart list, they get 25 points. And we define the logic for this within the smart list. So here we say the job title contains CEO, chief president, founder, owner, CIO, or COO, or since we're using any filters here, or if the seniority clear bit map field is executive, if either of these two things is true and a person is a member of that smart list, then we will assign them 25 points. So that's how we can build advanced matching logic using smart lists to assign scores. And the structure of each of these 10 scoring campaigns is the exact same. We either use member of smart list logic or we use simple contains or is matching logic with all the input fields to our model to execute this scoring logic that we have from our Google Sheet. And then the final part of our scoring workflow is to call the quality matrix request campaign. And the reason this is a request campaign instead of an executable campaign, like all the rest, is because it calls webhooks. And if you want to call webhooks, you cannot call webhooks from executable campaigns. You can only call them from request campaigns. And if you're unfamiliar with the differences between executable and request campaigns, I recommend taking a look at the Marketo executable versus request campaigns post so that you can get an in-depth walkthrough of both executable and request campaigns and the difference between the two. So in this quality matrix workflow, we can see that we call a webhook to calculate the sum of the demographic scores and the sum of the firmographic scores. Then we get the tier for the demographic and the tier for the firmographic. And then the final part of this is we calculate the quality score tier. So let's first take a look at the webhooks to see what is going on with them. Okay, so going to the admin section to look up our webhooks here, 
you'll notice that each of the webhooks uses the Hoosh Excel calculator. And as I mentioned in this blog post, you can also use the FlowBoost tool to send calculations via webhook using Marketo fields. I mentioned that here. So you can use the free Hoosh Marketing Excel calculator to do these calculations, or you can also use FlowBoost to do the same thing. So we can see in the calculate sum demo scores that we include all the demo score fields using their lead tokens, and we sum them all together here. And then we divide by 0 0.95. And this is, as I mentioned before, 95 is the maximum possible score someone could get. So by dividing by this value here, it will give us a percentage, which we can then later on use to get the tier. So, and the round value just rounds it up to the nearest whole number. So we send this formula with all the demo score fields to Hoosh, and then we map the result we get from Hoosh to the demo score total formula field, and we pull in the API name of the field here. And then we are going to use this field in the calculate tier demo score next. And it's the exact same with the calculate sum Fermo scores. We send all the Fermo scores to Hoosh using their lead tokens. We divide by one. So remember that the maximum possible firmographic score is 100. So one is the value we need to divide by here, whereas the maximum possible score for the demographic was 95. So we had to divide by 0 0.95 here. So this decimal value is the maximum possible score divided by 100. So it's 0 0.95 here and one here. And then we store that result in the Fermo score total formula field. So that's what these first two webhooks do. So we wait one second to get the answer back. And then we call the calculate tier demo score and calculate tier Fermo score webhooks. So in this case, we take that total formula value and then we evaluate it compared to these tiers from our Google sheet. So for the demo, total, we are going to compare it to these tiers. And for the Fermo total, we are going to compare it to these tiers. So in this case, we can see if it's greater than 60, it's tier one. Greater than 30, it's going to be tier two. If it's not greater than 30, then if it's greater than zero, it's tier three, else it's tier four. And then we store the response in the demo score tier formula field. And the same with Fermo. If the total Fermo score is greater than or equal to 70, it's tier one. Else, if it's not, if it's greater than or equal to 30, it's tier two. Else, if it's greater than zero, it's tier three. Else, it's tier four. And then we store the response in the Fermo score total tier two field. And then we wait one second after calculating these tiers before we evaluate a person's membership in these smart lists to determine what quality score tier they should get. So the logic used in each of these smart lists is determined by this matrix. So let's use the A as an example. We see that when anyone has tier one firmographic, they should be an A, or if they've got tier two firmographic and tier one demographic, they should also be an A. So to build the corresponding smart list, We can see that if the Fermo score tier formula is one and the demo score tier formula is either tier one, two, three, or four. So that corresponds to this column here. Then the person will be a member of the smart list. Or if the Fermo score tier formula is tier two and the demo score tier formula is tier one, which corresponds to this cell. Uh, just to show you another example, if we look at B here, we can see that Fermo score tier is tier two, or the demo score tier is tier two, three, or four. So that corresponds to these three here, and then we need to pull in these two next. So then we can see that the Fermo score tier is tier three or tier four, which is these two, and then the demo score tier is tier one and the demo score tier is tier one. So we have smart lists 
for each quality grade from A to D based on this diagram here. And then in the quality matrix flow, based on which smart list the person is a member of, they will have their quality score tier field value set appropriately. And there you have it. That's how we can determine an output grade from A to D for all the leads in our Marketo instance, according to the values they have for certain demographic and firmographic score fields. However, you're not done yet. As I mentioned, this is only one of three demographic and firmographic scoring models that I've outlined in this Marketo lead scoring blog post. So take a look at lead scoring model one and lead scoring model three to get some more ideas and then choose the best model that suits your company. And then you can also check out a lead scoring model based on a person's activities. And then you can combine this activity scoring model with your favorite demographic and firmographic lead scoring model and build them into a marketing qualification mechanism that you can use to hand leads off to sales when they are ready. And as always, if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this in the future, then please subscribe. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Have a great day.